EU4 is a game about many things, and a large chunk of those things involve fighting and combat. But there is also a nation building aspect to it, building up your country for success. You could do it conventionally, or you could also try and stack development cost modifiers to 100% so you dev for free, and achieve your mega city dreams without spending a single point of mana. Now, if you're not a fan of development and prefer more action in your life, then you should know that this video is brought to you by none other than World of Tanks. The fine chaps over at Wargaming told me to talk about their massive multiplayer online tank game. That's not these tanks, we're talking about these tanks. However, there is a slight flaw with their plan. For one, I can't read. But secondly, I actually played this game extensively. So instead of talking about their neat graphics, cool gameplay, and decades of updates. Let's talk about what you really want to know, how to win. Here, I made a mini account to demonstrate this. What you want to do is head on over to the store page, and once you've done that, click on this tab here to go to the collector's vehicle, select Germany. And what you will have is, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, this little thing here. This is called the Hetzer, and you will need a tier 4 German tank to actually unlock it. Furthermore, it's going to set you back a decent chunk of credits. Here is where I come in. I have a fancy code for you in the description and the pinned comment, which you can redeem for $20 worth of in-game stuff, which you can spend on other items, sure, or you can dump straight into credits and unlock this thing pretty much right away. This is a monster. You have a great gun for its level, and probably the best frontal armor at this tier as well. Half the tanks you'll be fighting will literally do zero damage to you if they hit you in the front. Furthermore, since you'll be playing at the lower tiers, advanced tanks tactics like not shooting the front of the tank and moving into cover have not been discovered by the player base at these levels, so your main weaknesses will be mitigated. Enjoy! Now, at some point, you probably want to try some other tanks. Fair enough, there's probably like dozens of them over here. Uh, wait, let me actually check the script I was meant to read. Um, mm -hmm, that's, uh, uh, 600! Okay, that's obscene. Sorry, Germany was over-criticized for having too many designs of tanks in World War II, and even then, they still only peaked at 55 total variants. 600 designs! Uh, oh, right, sponsorship! Sorry, I got distracted. Right, you know what to do. There's links in the description and the top comment. Grab them, you get free stuff. I hopefully get sponsored again, everyone wins. But with that said, back to the video. So the goal is development cost modifier. That is what we are stacking. To be clear, it is different to development cost, namely that there is a base cost of development, 50, which is then affected by dev cost modifiers. But that means that even at minus 200% dev cost on a three dev province, the dev cost can't hit zero since that is capped. What isn't capped is reducing the base cost. And if that hits zero, then 400% plus dev cost from development doesn't mean anything because 20 times zero is still zero. Anyway, I have a video explaining dev costs in more depth linked here. Just a quick disclaimer for the video, for the sources of it I decided to trust the wiki, and the wiki told me there was like two sources of it, so I mentioned that. As you can probably tell by the existence of this video, that claim is a lie. This routing has gotten a lot harder. See, Paradox does actually nerf things. Back in the day, the Lithuanian mission modifier of urban centers gave them 25% dev cost modifier. Today gives minus 5. The development of Lubeck mission gave minus 20% dev cost modifier as well. Today, that is at minus 5%. As such, compared to what Floriwari had in his run back in the day, we are already down 35% dev cost modifier. Regardless, today we try, and we hope to succeed. Right, before we get into the video, a like would be appreciated, a subscription would be amazing, and if you want to chat with me in a more casual sense, I spend too much time on Discord, so go click the link in the description to join that. Anyway, that is about it. So standard setup, meaning no custom nations, achievement compatible, Iron Man compatible. Let's go! And our journey today actually begins with Arak Yinli. The Karaki only has access to this mission here, Custodian of Baghdad, which when completed gives you minus 10% local dev cost modifier on Baghdad until the end of the game. Furthermore, we're able to pop the mission Repopulate Iran, which is going to be our first temporary modifier for minus 5% dev cost for 20 years. This is the part we have to start saving up our culture flips and all of our nation flips and all the other things to be ready to go immediately because we'll have a 20 year window to try and get there. So with that, we begin our first temporary modifier. Next, we move on to Georgia, which is relatively easy to form considering it's right there. Mission we can pop called the Cradle of Civilization, which is going to give the entire Iraq area minus 5% local dev cost modifier. That's this area here, which is obviously going to also include Baghdad, meaning that on the Baghdad province itself, we're now at minus 20%. The next formable is going to be a bit further away, as we need to go ahead and form Lubeck for the aforementioned minus 5% local dev cost modifier until the end of the game. When we do this, however, make sure that Lubeck does move his capital to Baghdad to get that local dev cost modifier on Baghdad, as this is a promise modifier, not a global modifier. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. You're going to have to plan very much for the late game for this, as we're going to need to pick up all three dev cost modifiers from Admin Technologies. Namely, Admin Tech 27 will be the final one, which is going to give us a massive minus 30% dev cost modifier just for existing. This is going to knock us down to 55% dev cost modifier reduction overall. Next, the final games begin. Now, I've tagged it to Korea here, we need to become Korean primary culture. When you become Korean primary culture, you gain access to the Hermit Kingdom government reform going to give you dev costs in primary culture as well as some cost advisor rulers and some institution spreads all those fun things but most importantly it's going to give you access to these buttons here 
and you want to press inward focus to gain a global dev cost modifier of minus 5%. Next, you will be in the final age, so what's going to happen is, at the later tiers, the centralized Monaco bureaucracy government reform will flip. See, if you have at least 15 provinces in the starting age, or 25, or 35, or 50 in the final one, you have access to the centralized Monaco bureaucracy this form, which gives you coach conversion cost and some monthly autonomy and stuff like that. What you want to do instead is become small. So you want to have no more than 15 provinces on your home continent. You can also achieve this by moving your capital around and to different continents and other kind of setup. But in essence, you want to have less than 15 or 50 provinces. Finally, when you're ready to pop this, as this will give you access to another minus 5% global dev cost modifier. Finally, go ahead and grab the economic hegemon, as this is going to give you a further minus 5% dev cost modifier. And with that, we're getting to our end tag. Namely, we need to form Poland so they can go ahead and form Commonwealth. The Polish version of the Commonwealth missions includes these couple missions at the bottom, where if we achieve this mission here through alliances, we'll gain for the next 20 years as well. 10% trade efficiency, but most importantly, 5% dev cost modifier. And this is going to, again, be only lasting us for 20 years, but make sure you do this mission the friendly way so you get the correct buff. Finally, since you've already claimed the economic hegemon, this mission here will give you for the last 25 years another minus 5% dev cost modifier. Next, you need to go ahead and grab infrastructure ideas. You just need to have them open, you just need to have them selected, which will allow you to pop this event here. We either be able to choose to get minus 10% local construction time and local development cost on your entire region where your capital is located, so the Poland region, or if you invest in specifically your capital area, so that's the state, you'll be able to get minus 15% local construction cost and minus 5% local dev cost modifier instead for 10 years. Timing this event is going to be rather difficult, but it's doable. So that's what you need to do for a further 5% local dev cost modifier. So what else can you do for the final 15%? Well, that is it. I tried to look through the game code the best I could, looking for any further modifiers I could find that are doable. While I still think custom nations are cheating, but I have to admit, with the tools we have at the moment, I don't think it's possible. So let's get back to our earlier conditions, standard setup. Let us break a taboo to achieve this unholy development for zero points. We need to disable limited nation form. Since after forming the Commonwealth, we can go ahead and form France, since we're no longer an NTAG, because NTAGs don't exist. And with France, we can get 0.2 goods produced, or basically a free dip click on every single province, as well as minus 5% dev cost modifier until the end of the game. Now, there is another mission here that gives dev cost modifier. Unfortunately, that mission is both temporary and only applies to the France region, of which Baghdad is not a part. Anyway, after you form France, go ahead and form Russia. With traditions and ambitions at any point that you're doing this, feel free to take whatever you want. In this case, I'm not going to abandon our roots. The reason we are in Russia is for the mission Modernize the State. This very helpfully scopes to your highest development province. So just make sure the Baghdad is at this point your highest development province to gain a further minus 5% dev cost modifier on it until the end of the game. You also get a university, but given that you need to be at Admin Tech 27 to do this anyway, I don't think the university is that big of a deal. Finally, we'll be returning to our homeland, or very close to our homeland of Baghdad, as we need to go ahead and form Persia. Once we've gone ahead and formed Persia, we can move our capital, because this scopes to the capital, towards Baghdad, and finally get the center of culture there until the end of the game, giving 25% production efficiency, 50 tax, and minus 5% local dev cost modifier on our capital, putting us at the finally required minus 100% local development cost modifier that we need to dev for free. Baghdad truly is the city of the world's desire in this version, but of course this build does involve many culture flips and many other issues in the process. Bear in mind that you'll be concluding this build with the Korean culture previously mentioned for the Korean government form. If, however, you want a true dear version of this at home with minimal tax switches, then I have just a build for you. This is going to involve playing as a custom nation. So, the main thing that we need is to have our capital in Chengdu, and I'm going to quickly draw one, hopefully uh, uh, not that ugly looking, but it's pretty hard to do, kind of mini blob. Whatever version of it you want to do, you can. I personally think you can, if you've been very brave, do it as the one promise minor thing. But up to you, really. Call it whatever you want. Make sure your capital isn't Chengdu, though. Although you can just move it later anyway. And of course, become your primary culture as Korea. Which does even rename it. So there we go. It's now Sengdu. Cool. Go ahead and take the Hermit Kingdom reform. And finally, let's talk ideas, because you want to pick up minus 20% dev cost modifier. And since you're in the area, may as well grab a further 20% dev cost. And for good measure, make sure you grab all power cost minus 10%, as there's basically a further minus 10% dev cost. The rest of the ideas are really up to you. Another thing I would strongly suggest is grabbing a bunch of advisor costs to run really cheap advisors, as well as, of course, the flat goods produced. This is, of course, really powerful at plus two in a wide empire, but even for something like you, it's still a lot of free development, namely 20 dev just for existing. Although at this point, I'd also recommend a 20% goods produced to grab as well, since you'll be going super tall. Anyway, the reason we're here in Chengdu is that we can of course build this project, and at level 3 it's going to give us local development cost minus 10%. 
Then there it is at level 3, giving us another minus 10% local dev cost, which we're combining with our promoted urbanization for minus 30%. Eventually we pick up another 30% dev cost modifier from our technology, taking us all the way down to minus 60% base dev cost. However, make sure you don't forget the inward focus for dev cost modifier minus 5%, and of course the centralized bureaucracy for another dev cost modifier of minus 5%. And would you look at that, our base dev cost is now reduced to, down to 15. We can of course go ahead and grab economic hegemon, which is going to give us a further minus 5% dev cost, taking us down to minus 75% and naturally holding infrastructure for this event is always a great idea. That would get you with the event down to 80%, so certainly not perfect, but it's most of the way there. And don't forget, you still have your dev cost in primary culture from the Hermit Kingdom reform for another 10% there, the infrastructure dev cost on the finisher, and I suggest taking defensive ideas followed by economic, as not only will this give you a lot more money, it's also going to give you access to this policy here, which includes a further minus 10% dev cost in primary culture. Now, this is certainly no dev cost modifier build for sure, and it's going to apply very locally to a province, but it should be a fun campaign nevertheless, and you have a mini final boss with the Ming on your doorstep, so enjoy that as best as you can. But with minus 80% dev cost modifier on your province, as well as those aforementioned dev cost buffs, enjoy building your Dwarven Hold outside of Amphidon. Anyway, that is all I have time for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!